It's a dead duck and it has been for years. It's going to be a money pit for the taxpayer for years to come. You'd sell it to someone like Amazon for a pound, get really good contracts for all the serving sub-postmasters, right. and within a few years you'll have one of the best networks okay. around. Based on what you've heard this morning, Mr Bates, are you any more comfortable or reassured that the government has now got a grip of this process for providing redress? No, I'm afraid not. It's very disappointing. And this has been going for years, as you well know, and I can't see any end to it. Obviously, unacceptable with three years, eight months, and in yourself, Mr Bates, for everything you've been through and obviously made yourself very high profile, rightly so, uh, in taking this forward. The, obviously, the current government's statements about the forthcoming legislation does not propose any measures for members of the GLO group. I was just keen to understand, do you think that's a mistake in your opinion? I don't know what you can do other than, than it, you know, remove the whole scheme away from government itself or in the <coughs> department and try and do it elsewhere. But, I, I mean, <laughs> we keep coming back to this time after time after time. Pay people. Pay, there's a lot of distractions, a lot of other things are brought up, thrown up all the time. But just get on and pay people. And it's... It, I mean, we, we've heard figures this morning, given perfect examples of how long it is going to take. Um, there are de people refuse to give deadlines now because they can't meet them. Uh, I mean, that suggestion that I put in, I think, earlier about paying people a £1,000 a, a day or them being charged a £1,000, that is actually compensation, and that should go to the actual claimant involved. I mean, everyone keeps referring to the scheme, understandably, as a compensation scheme. But it's not. It's financial redress. This is money these people are actually owed. And they've been owed it for years. Compensation sounds it's like something of the benefit of the whim of government and all the rest of it. Uh, I, let's get it right and let's really push forward on, on that aspect of it. Lots of victims have said to us that when they're asked to apply for redress, it's almost like they've got a blindfold on because they haven't got the information. Often the post office has got the information, but they're having to submit a claim form without that information. Is that a common problem? Well, doubt was always meant to be in favour of the claimant. I'm not sure that's happening. The, the second issue that's come up a lot is that when the, an offer is given, it's, it's a bit of a black box as to how that's been worked out because there's no standard tariffs, for example, calculating reputational damage, and it's really difficult, therefore, to assess whether what's been tabled is in any way fair, because there's no explanation for how the offer's been put together. Is that a problem? Um, well, it, the claims fall into two... I mean, the lawyers are better to speak to you about this, but, I mean, it, it's the pecuniary and the non-pecuniary, isn't it? The, the items that, where they pay back money or it's, it's lost to the house. It's the other side that causes the problems normally. It's the, the stress, the, the problems that have caused psychologically to people and all that side, where it, it's a lot harder for them to take those, those issues forward. And then we've got this kind of David and Goliath struggle whereby claimants are given maybe £1,200 of legal advice, but you're up against one of the biggest law firms in the country contesting your claims. There's an inequality of arms there when it comes to getting the final claim sorted. I think you're referring to the HSS scheme there mm. in particular. I really haven't had a lot to do with that. I'm just concentrated on the GLO and yeah. the 500. Is that an issue for the GLO scheme as well, though? Uh, it's, it's different because there's a different legal fee structure in there as it uh -huh. goes forward. And, and, and in fairness, uh, I think the lawyers are, are dealing with most of the issues along the way. And I want to ask you about the leadership of the person. So you've been involved for 20, 25 years, in which case there have been various changes in leadership. Um, has at any time the arrival of a new chairman or a chief executive led you to think, ah, there might be somebody new in charge, that may change things. Perhaps Mr Bates, given your experience in the matter. Well, I think you know, over the years I've been dealing with post office, the, the, the culture has always been post office. It hasn't changed, it's been the same for donkey's years. It will not change and you cannot change it. My personal view about post office is it's a dead duck and it has been for years and it's going to be a money pit for the taxpayer for years to come and you should sell it to someone like Amazon for a pound, 
get really good contracts for all the serving sub postmasters well, and within a few years you'll have one of the best networks okay, that's around. A very them. radical proposal <laughs> and not one I'm sure that My view. not <laughs> one I'm sure that many of our <coughs> constituents would be comfortable <laughs> with. But interesting that, and I want to ask you about the leadership of the post office. So you've been involved for twenty, twenty five years, in which case there have been various changes in leadership. Um, has at any time the arrival of a new chairman or a chief executive led you to think, ah, there might be somebody new in charge, that may change things, perhaps Mr Bates, given your experience in the matter. Well, I think you know, over the years I've been dealing with post office, the, the, the culture has always been post office. It hasn't changed, it's been the same for donkey's years. It will not change and you cannot change it. My personal view about post office is it's a dead duck and it has been for years and it's going to be a money pit for the taxpayer for years to come and you should sell it to someone like Amazon for a pound, get really good contracts for all the serving sub-postmasters right. and within a few years you'll have one of the best networks okay, that's around. a very them. radical proposal and not one I'm sure that, My view. Not My one view. I'm sure that many of our <coughs> constituents would be comfortable mm. with. It's unfair on too many people this. For, and it's been going on for far too long. I don't know what can be done to speed it up. You've got to get rid of the bureaucracy in there. You've got to slim down the, the processes in there. And people are going to have to take other people's words. Interesting, an observation of, you know, from the earlier witnesses um, <clears throat> was the fact of how much time was spent on someone signing off, finally, mm -hmm. an offer and how, how little time. And one of the big problems I've found with this, or I'm starting to find, is those who are making the decisions about the actual claims, or, or what claims are going to be made, do not meet the victims face to face and discuss it with them. Mm. It's all done from an ivory tower, from someone else, and ticking a box, and that's it. Their job's done out of the way. And does that lead to a lack of understanding of the position I'm, that you and your colleagues face? Yeah, it is. And I, I can explain that perhaps in, in a way, <laughs> hopefully you'll understand. I mean, when we were campaigning for all of this over the years, and people were saying, you know, I've, I've tried to take this up with my MP and all the rest of it, and the problems I'm having, I'd say to them, well, look, don't just write them a letter. Don't just phone them. Make an appointment, go and see them. Tell them face to face what's gone on. And I've heard from many people that what was meant to be a 15 or 20 minute surgery session has turned into a couple of hours because they've been so concerned about what they've heard face to face. And I think that, was, that makes a big difference. It's funny, one of the ways I had thought of trying to resolve all this issue, if this carries on much longer, is for all of the, 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 those in the GLO scheme to stand as MPs and then <laughs> in the next election come, then we'll sort it out once and for all. But uh, it would be the priority. But um, I, I don't know. I, I, re I mean, I think so many facts give, Let me give you an now. example, though. Yeah. So we could change the law so that the post office is taken out of the redress scheme. That might be a good idea. Oh, yeah, well, yes. But I, I certainly, I would go back to, I, I, I want to clear up the disclosure issue first. Yeah. I think that's, that's the key thing to all of well, this. Well, we could change the law so that the post office has a legally binding deadline for making the disclosures. Well, that would be a good, good thing. That would be a good indeed, idea. Yeah. In, in your letter, you've also suggested some legally binding timetables Oh yes, I, would that be a good idea? I do, and I do think there should be penalties involved where, mm. where they're, they're not met, and those penalties should go to the victims, as I mentioned earlier, not to any other person, because that would then be compensation in a, for having to wait and delay. Uh, well, I just I think you've given us three very good okay. Mr. Bates tests for what this new legislation needs to do.